Hello everyone and welcome to the second book review which is The Alchemist by Poella Coelho and let me say I really personally enjoyed this book for being a book that is a fiction. It is so wrapped up in the non-fiction world that we live in and how life operates and how we should be allowing ourselves to experiencing it and um, going after what we want. So the main purpose of The Alchemist that I took away from was learning to listen to your heart, follow your personal legend or dream, and this is something that you've known since childhood. This is something that you naturally gravitated towards, that you wanted to do when you were young, but then, you know, someone either told you you couldn't or, you know, seeing the world, how it operates, kind of made you feel like you couldn't, and then you gave away this dream and decided to go another safer direction that felt more promising. And so uh, this book is really encouraging to go after that original dream, that dream of your heart that really knows. Um, and being a part of the language of the world, which is his way of saying being a part of the oneness, the all, which is love. So that's a big uh, main overarching theme of The Alchemist. And it's also knowing that like a lot of it is within our heart. It's all shaped around a hermeticism. Because they mention the Emerald Tablet multiple times throughout this book. It's very in integrated with it. So Hermeticism is a big, huge part of um, what's influencing some of these directions that this book is going in. So I'm going to go ahead and read a few quotes here. Page 18, it says, When you see people every day, they become a part of your life and want to change you. If someone is not what the other is... They become angry. Everyone has a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. So that goes into that again, like saying like people lose track of like what's in their heart, what they want to pursue, what they want to go after and kind of look towards others. And like what are the next quote says to realize our personal legend is the person's only real obligation. So knowing that this the life, the purpose of us being here is not only to evolve, but it's evolve, to evolve through our personal legend. What is it that truly our heart desires and wants us to do and going after that and realizing what it is and going for it and going towards it, making every step that you um, create for yourself as a step closer towards fulfilling that. And that is what, you know, again, alchemy is really going into this is what life should be about. Now, the next little thing they go over is about omens and so basically omens are kind of like hints of that the universe gives you they give you like little it helps you like find your direction and how to get to where you're trying to go and so like it could be even as simple as like a stranger being like ooh, you know you're like oh i don't know where i want to eat and the stranger's like ooh, i know some places and they like name one a particular and you go there and then when you go there you get an opportunity um you see something let's say you see a flyer there that's like an opportunity to uh, join a contest and let's say a musical contest and you are a musician and you want to be more seen so you're like whoa there's a musical contest so you go there you join that and then you win and then you get attention from whatever so like things like that like how life gives like little omens and stuff along the way and just paying attention to them and so an example from the book is that um you know the whole thing is this shepherd who's just living on his own he wants to live free in the world so that's why he's a shepherd and then he gets this idea he gets these dreams that he needs to find this treasure by the pyramids and so he starts to, you know, he goes to Egypt, but, you know, the pyramids are, like, way further away from where he's at, and he loses all of his money because someone steals it from him. So now he's like, what do I do? So he's like, oh, I could work at a crystal shop here because um, they're offering me. I can help them sell these crystals. But this crystal shop was all the way at the top of a hill, and so not many people went up there, so it was slow. Well, he happened to be passing by some customers or overheard them, and they were talking about, oh, how nice would it be to have a drink up here? It's so hot. And then he was like, that's a great idea. So he's like, he decided, okay, why don't we give our customers teas in these crystal glasses, these crystal drinking glasses, so then they can have, you know, like a little treat up the hill. And so ever since that, 
then more people started coming. They're excited. They're like, whoa. And they were buying these crystal glasses because they're like, tea tastes best in these crystal glasses. And so it really helped up their business. And the businesses below that try to copy that method, they were like trying to give out tea as well. It wasn't the same because it wasn't at the top of the hill. It wasn't as rewarding to have tea at those shops. So it only worked for theirs. So those are kind of like little examples of what omens can be. Um, so... I have another quote here on page 64. When you want something, all the universe conspires to help you achieve it. And I think that's part of like what those omens are for. They're like little hints from the universe. The universe wants you to achieve what your heart desires. And so it will all conspire together to help you receive that. And that's another big theme of this book. All right, and so the next uh, topic that the book kind of goes over is like listening to your heart. Here's a quote from page 119. Wherever your heart is, there you will find treasure. You've got to find the treasure so that everything you have learned along the way can make sense. Right, so we're having all these experiences, and we're just, and what they really are are like little toolkits. They're little hints of like what can we utilize to help achieve and get to our goal and so it's kind of like a training ground to get there and so it's like that's why we have all these experiences and we can be more creative in how we reach our goal or what the journey is to get there it's not the same for you know the same for everybody it's different and so that's part of the the fun and we have to keep continuing to make steps and progress towards it to make it worth all the trials we've been through on page 132 it says listen to your heart it knows all things because it came from the soul of the world and it will return to it all right so that's again we're all a part of the oneness the universe and the reason why we were put here and we had these desires were for a reason that's part of the universe's way of working it's the way of operating and so that's why it wants you to achieve it because there's a reason why you want it you don't just want it out of nowhere 134 says no heart has ever suffered when it goes in search of the dreams because every second of the search is a second's encounter with God. Fear of suffering is worse than suffering itself. So yeah, it's like you will be happy as long as you are going towards what you truly desire. You know you're you're living the way that you want to live. There's no holding back. There's no fear of not achieving it. You know, there's not like these little things that can make you feel somber, make you feel incomplete and and not fulfilling. It's fulfilling being able to just reach out and grab and be persistent. And so it's not about like, oh, I can't do this. It's like, okay, I'm going to keep doing it until I get there. And, and having that mindset is just going to make you feel like a complete whole person, like you're living in your purpose. And so that's what that's going into. Page 135, um, everyone, it says, everyone, ha- everyone happy has God in him. Happiness can be found in a grain of sand because the grain is a moment of creation. So yeah, it's like being grateful for every little thing around us. So it is God's creation. It is um, something here to enjoy. We are all part of that and, and the oneness. We're all the same. We're all, you know... The grain, like it's like it's like the again Kybalion. It's like, you know, the grain of sand is a part of God, but it isn't God. But it's a part, and so are we. We're the same way. We're a part, but we're not Him. And so, yeah, it's like we're all a part, different parts together. Every little part of the universe, and so being able to enjoy any little beautiful creation from Him, including grains of sand, that's just a part of the beauty now it also goes over the alchemist also goes over the reason why we're here we have quote 131 god created the world so through its visible objects men could understand his spiritual teachings and the marvels of his wisdom so it's like the earth is like a physical plane where we can marvel at um, what the wisdom of love is and experience how to love and like what is true love and we get to experience all of every little inch of that um, I guess that feeling and just in general enjoying the creation that exists because we are here in it 147 says what alchemy does is bring spiritual perfection to the physical plane it's the same thing as, as above so below so everything that was existed in the universe that is so beautiful at it in general, we're bringing down to earth and creating it in a physical sense. It's not all just 
um, ideas and free flowing, we're actually creating it into something tangible that we can hold. Um, we have, quote, 151, I have inside of me the wind, desert, oceans, and stars. We are made by the same hand. We have the same soul. Okay, again, we're all a part of that oneness. We're all each other. Um, I can also reference Eckhart Tolle's, I think it was Power of Now that had it, where we're saying, like, you know, don't be somber because, you know, a fish had died because that fish is part of, you know, the other fish there is part of you. You know, it's all, it's part of the oneness. And so it's about, like, losing that separateness that you and me it's like realizing that's only an illusion that we have here on earth it's not actually two separate things it's all part of the one all right we have 154 so the sun to earth this is what the sun said to earth we want each other i give it life and warmth and it gives me a reason for living. So that's kind of like the interactions between, you know, each thing and how why how al alchemy kind of works. It's like it wants us to succeed. It wants us to be nurtured. Life and um, the oneness in general wants us to succeed and be nurtured because we give it a reason for being there. Why is the oneness there? Why is the oneness creating a physical plane for us to marvel at its wonders and, and enjoy um, what all it has to offer and feeling love? It's um, a little bit more than that, right? It's a little bit further. It's giving it a purpose and, and giving it a reason to evolve itself. Um, it's all about evolution. And uh, line 170 says, life is generous. Light Life is generous to those who pursue their personal legends. So again, life wants us to succeed at it and wants us to go at it. And so that, again, is the main theme of the book. Um, I would say if you want to know the twist, there's a little twist at the end. So um, if you want that, you can read it yourself. Cliffhanger! And um, get a complete sense of, you know, the shepherd's journey of finding his treasure and what he learned along the way. I mean, there's so much more... Um, to the story than what I've said. I just said a quick little overview of kind of the meaning behind the book, but if you want to see the fiction story on play, I definitely recommend reading it. It's a short book, doesn't take long to read. It's a very easy it's a very easy read at that and very enjoyable. There's a lot of um Paulo Coelho's beautiful lines in it, enjoying his writing and and so it's definitely worth it. And um Paolo Coelho is actually living out this um um the this story that he's creating because um what he had to do to get this book seen because, you know, he's a man from Brazil and his original uh, publisher had only was able to sell three copies so they're like no you know we can't risk this anymore so they released him but he wasn't going to stop there you know he was 41 at the time and he but he didn't he didn't lose faith in that like his personal legend was to share this word to share this knowledge of alchemy and he was like this book has such strong purpose that it has to be out there so he searched for publishers and finally you know one had let him in and he was successful he sold thousands and someone from america had come there and was like i would love to translate this and bring this to america and so you know that happened and now it's like millions of sold and, and there's a reason why it's a really good book and so I do highly recommend reading it. I personally enjoyed it. So anyway, those are all the, um, that's all that I really, uh, the main parts that I took away from this book. I encourage you guys to uh, read this one and I hope you guys have an amazing week.